Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to explore a pair of spaces I don't think we've ever shown on this channel before. Uh, and we're going to go inside the forward smokestack and, and talk briefly about uh, how you can tell how fast a ship goes by the number of smokestacks and, and some other thoughts on smokestacks that I have. Just for a little bit of clarity, uh, you'll often hear the terms smokestack, stack, or funnel used interchangeably when you're talking about the exhaust system on Navy ships. Um, I prefer the term smokestack because it is very clear, uh, particularly to our non-native English speaking audience members and people who are not uh, former service members, what we're talking about. But uh, the, the big pipe things that stick out the top of this ship where the smoke comes out after the boilers burn fuel. That's what we're talking about in this one. But first, to get inside of it, we are in a compartment that's called 041071C. This room has some of the radar equipment for the starboard side amidships Mark 37 gunnery director for the five inch guns. So this is an original World War II space that uh, it's got the armored wiring trunk for that gun director coming down through it. And it's got some of the, the radar equipment built into it. And it's just slapped here on the side of the superstructure, right next to this entrance to the uh, inside of the stack. Oh yeah, yeah, smoke pipe enclosure. Weird, doesn't say funnel. Anyway, uh, we're gonna crawl in there, so come on. People complain that I don't uh, dress nice enough on the videos. I don't dress nice because I end up in spaces like this for you people. So first off, right inside the door, we've got this wonderful pit of death. Leads all the way back down. We're on the 04 level right now. Uh, it probably leads down to the main deck or maybe second deck. There's another one over here. But you notice we've got this trunking up We've got another one on this side, trunking up. These are the starboard side uptakes from fire rooms one and two. Uh, you know, I said that it does seem like this space spans the entire uh, ship, so it's probably also got the port side uptakes in it as well. Um, and you see how these come together like this. Iowa class battleships separate fire room engine room, fire room, engine room, so that a single torpedo hit that maybe hits on a bulkhead between, say, two fire rooms isn't going to knock out half of the ship's steam power or half of the ship's engineering. Uh, so it alternates those propulsion plants. On older ships, you would then probably see a separate funnel for each fire room, which would mean that Iowa-class battleships would have four stacks. And that's typically how you can tell with World War I era ships and older how fast they are. They have a bunch of stacks, it means they have a bunch of boilers, it means they probably go faster. If they have a single stack or, or even just two stacks, they're probably going to be a slower vessel. Uh, you can tell a lot about a ship's capabilities just by looking at the outside of it and, and knowing what time period it's from specifically. Because as boiler technology gets better, um, the number of boilers is reduced tremendously. In 1916, it would have taken 24 boilers to get a ship the weight of an Iowa-class battleship up above 30 knots. But we do it with just eight, which means that we don't need as many of these exhaust trunkings going up through the ship. Now, why do we have them make these curves as they go up? We don't want a straight pipe from the boiler room up because they were worried about aerial bombs coming straight down the stack and going into the boiler room. So on Iowa-class battleships, all of our uptakes make S-curves, both inboard towards the center of the ship, away from where the boilers are, and uh, upwards so that a bomb coming down the middle will at a certain point hit something like this, and now it's no longer going on a di direct drive to a fire room, as opposed to if it was just a straight shot down. We really thought that uh, a bomb had gone down the stack of Arizona to destroy that ship until uh, much later on. 
Or at least that was one of the main theories. Not everybody thought it. The problem is center line deck space is vitally important. If you put a gun on the center line, it can aim either direction, which means you don't need to have the weight of two guns, one on each side. So even though you're less susceptible to overhead hits by having as many uptakes as possible, it takes up valuable deck space. And uh, so you see countries trunking all their boilers into the smallest number of uptakes possible. So you see a ship like Bismarck at 50,000 tons able to do 30 knots with all 12 of her boilers trunked into a single funnel. Problem is, all of her boilers are in the same part of the ship, so a single hit there uh, really started to degrade the ship's speed capabilities. Uh, likewise, Yamato, very similar. The Iowa class, though, remember, we separate our boiler rooms and our fire and our uh, engine rooms out. So that's why she ends up with multiple funnels. We could have trunked them together. There were designs for Illinois and Kentucky where it was all trunked together into a single funnel, which then makes better arcs of fire for the AA guns and means we free up centerline space for additional guns. But that eats into the interior volume of the ship. Much of your superstructure is rooms like this one here where we can't put anything else because we've got these two pipes coming together. If everything between turret one and turret, or excuse me, if everything between turret two where the forward fire room starts and turret three where the after engine room ends is just uptakes trunking together, all of this massive interior space that could have been used for living quarters or powder magazines or whatever else is now eaten up by these hot uptakes coming through them. It's going to make the ship crowded, cramped, uncomfortable, and hot. And so the designers of the Iowa class chose to go with two funnels at a time when most other battleships, the Yamatos, the um, Bismarcks, no, most notably that everybody out there can say, uh, have gone to a single funnel to free up more deck space. So, what do you think is the ideal number of smokestacks on a ship? We all watch uh, Naval History YouTube channels. We, we have opinions on what ships look good and what don't. What is the ideal number of smokestacks? Just one to increase your arcs of fire, leave less cluttered duck spa deck space? Or uh, is it more? I'm a real sucker for four stacker ships like the Clemson class destroyers and the Big Ten armored cruisers that the United States Navy operated. However, if you go any higher than four, I have some serious problems. That original design for the Lexington class battle cruisers with seven funnels, oh, the, uh, those French pre-dreadnoughts that, that had all sorts of funnels on them, ah, no, 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 no. Four is the ideal number of funnels. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to allow us to uh, keep exploring a ship like this. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.